Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to Lavender Cottage Five Arts Podcast and this is our seventh episode. Um, so thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far and if you do like this video and you're not subscribed yet, um, please feel free to subscribe for more of our podcast updates. Um, before we go any further though, we would like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands that we're recording this podcast on, which is the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and extend our respect to their elders past, present and emerging, as well as any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who happen to be watching this video. Um, so my name is Anna and this and is Pia. Pia. Hello. Hello. And we are twins from Melbourne in Australia and this is our podcast where we talk about all things fiber arts which is mostly geared towards knitting and crochet at the mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Um, but I think today we've also got a tiny bit of embroidery uh, related stuff and yep. some a uh, tiny bit as well of sewing as well. So um, yeah, do you reckon we should just... Jump yeah, straight in. Think we'll get yeah. started. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so our first podcast segment is called Hot Off the Hooks or Hot Off the Needles, and this is where we talk about any projects that we have finished um, in the last month or mm -hmm. since our last episode. Uh, so I've been a little bit slack, and I actually don't have anything uh, to update in this section. So I will hand over to. I know who has been very prolific this month. <laughs> um, yeah, but I feel like a lot of the things I've done have been sort of fairly short-term projects. So, um, so my first one is a sewing one. So I made um, a couple of episodes ago, I made a project bag and I've now made a second one. Um, and I just used the same pattern. So it was from an Etsy seller called um, Pattern Sewing Shop. Uh, and it also comes the pattern. She also has like a YouTube uh, video that walks you through because um, I'm pretty beginner at sewing. So I sort of, I guess, need a lot of instruction. I actually don't remember the designer of the fabric. because It's just like a bit of fluff on it. Um, but I'll see if when I get home, it's just some fabric from my stash that I bought ages ago, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll see if along the selvage, I think sometimes with quilting cottons, it, oh, it says it like the, the designer's, designer's name. name or like the name of the pattern. Yeah. And the fabric that I used, um, I will hold it up a little bit closer. Um, I don't know if that's going to show you there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fabric that I used for the bottom of the bag, and then I actually also used it for the lining is from the same range. So it's like these little, uh, daisies, but the, um, the main, um, the main fabric that I used um, is this sort of all over floral print that has some of those small uh, daisies on yeah. it. Uh, so yeah, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. It's got one internal pocket um, and then it's just like a drawstring um, closure. Uh, so yeah, pretty handy. And I find that this is a good size and I actually quite like these handles that I can, if I want to like go for a walk and knit, I just... Um, like have it oh, sort of draped over, over, over your arm. my arm and it's a good good size for that um, so yeah it's, I've kind of been using that as my uh, project bag for taking something on the train to knit on and the internal pocket is kind of the good size for like my notions tin oh, yeah. um, or something like that so yeah, that's a good idea yeah I'm still like yeah still sort of learning a lot with sewing like my seams aren't the most neat and stuff like that but um, yeah it's fun to make and I've definitely got heaps of fabric so I'll yeah probably mm. make another couple of those um, so then apart from that I think I have a few crochet um, baskets that I made and mm -hmm. um, a couple of pairs of socks and I think um, that is uh, and then actually I have one baby thing that I have already gifted so I'll just have oh, to have share a photo, a photo yeah. of that one because I've already um, given it to the recipient mm -hmm. um, so I'll show you the crochet ones first I guess so this one I did have this um, bucket basket uh, type of thing um, as a whip in our last episode so the pattern is called the effort bucket it's not really a pattern though it's more just like a recipe I guess to make um, a crochet basket um, so I finished it now um, it is probably a little bit floppy like I think now I like now that I've finished it I probably should have used a smaller hook I think I um, used a six and a half millimeter hook um, and I used three strands of DK weight cotton held together 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it kind of doesn't stand up on its own. But I guess like once it's full of stuff, yeah. it'll be fine. Or I could actually use it as like, I guess like a sweater sized um, like project bag as well if I yeah. want. Just that that handle isn't well, like it's I long enough to use hold it. As like it, a market bag but or it's whatever. Not, to... um, not long enough to kind of go to put just put over your arm like but it can't go shoulder yeah. yeah you couldn't really use it as like a tote bag to go yeah. over your shoulder um yeah i think once once it's full of um yeah whatever you're planning to use it for like you could even use something like this as like i suppose it would be big enough to use as like a little laundry hamper or something yeah like that. yeah i guess so um so that one um yeah the pattern is by tasha louisa mc and it's just like a free pattern um, on Ravelry but I would highly recommend these as like yeah if you've got kind of like excess sort of yarn that you just like kind of want to do a bit of a stash busting project because mm-hmm. um, you can hold yeah you could even hold like five or six strands together um, to make like a really chunky yarn and it works up very very quickly so it's like mm-hmm. quite satisfying as well um, so then I thought I used all of the and this I should say as well so this is um, the uh, um, co- Freedom Cotton from Abbey Road which is I think it's Spotlight's like own brand mm-hmm. um, of yarn and the colorway is called Push Top so I just used three yarn uh, three strands of the same color all held together mm-hmm. um, I thought I used all of it but then I found in my cupboard that I still had two left <laughs> so I actually just made like a tiny little um, like basket I guess I feel like that could be good to like organize like I don't know socks or something like that mm-hmm. um yeah and so this one I got ended up getting a bit of a different effect just I guess like where I was in the skein as I started holding them together like I didn't get any real obvious stripes it's kind of just like mild the whole way yep. through um so that was just using two skeins and that is actually a gift for you because you said that you um I think when I showed the the whip the last time, you said you really like the colours. Yeah, so I, I do I really like these sort of like pastel blue kind of yeah sea so and sea green type up of colours. Up to you what you want to do with that. <laughs> I suppose you could even have it like, I don't know, like a fruit bowl on a kitchen bench or something. Yeah, it's like it doesn't have to be for – it can just be home organisation. It doesn't have to be for organising – crochet and knitting mm. and actually i should say with this one and this one which is the last one i made of it um this is a different colorway same same yarn but it's called the colorway of this one was called fads um with both of these two i use two skeins for it i think i this one's a little bit shorter because it's slight i think maybe it's like one round mm-hmm. uh wider in the base mm-hmm. um so the sides ended up being a little bit shorter but for these i actually held uh four strands together oh. instead of three but i actually used the same hook size so six, okay, six so- Uh it's uh, like the sides of it is a bit um stiffer a little bit stiffer but i feel like maybe if i had made it to that height it probably still would have flopped flopped over a bit i don't know if to get it to the like stiffness that it's gonna stand up on its own i feel like maybe it would actually hurt your hands quite a bit oh yeah it would be quite um, kind of do the whole thing um but these these ones this size worked up super quickly i did this in like an afternoon type of thing so yeah very quick um if you feel like that would be a good thing as well like to have in your back pocket as like a gift project if you needed a gift for somebody and you yeah i mean i feel like these um kind of baskets would maybe also be good for organizing like children's soft toys or something Mm, like that mm, mm. Um, so it's like a gift for or you could even um like make um like i guess like a gift hamper for someone like you could put like some chocolates or something like in there and then Mm. give that in this Yes. rather than having stuff like wrapped up in like plastic cellophane or whatever like mm. it's a functional wrapping so yep. uh yes th- that was my crochet um fo's mm-hmm. and then in terms of knitting so i have a couple of pairs of socks so um this pair of socks is probably the ones that i've been working on for the longest so these are my love story socks uh from the crazy sock lady the pattern And the yarn is from Passion Flower. All of the um, different colors are from Roz. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the purple is called Your Turning Violet Violet. The pink is Dusty Rose. The green is uh, Dandelion. The white that has these sort of pink, I think sometimes here on the foot you can see a bit of it, um, these sort of pink flecks is called Azalea. And the orange is called Nasturtium. I'll just um, hold it up a little bit closer so you you can can see the um, the colors and the the pattern as well. Um, This pattern, it's not as like, it looks like you would have tons of ends to sew in, but you actually don't have that many because you carry the main color the whole way through. You never cut the main color Mm -hmm. and the contrast colors, you only cut it every, so each of these little blocks 
is a 16 row repeat but mm -hmm. and there's a bit of the main color in the middle but you only cut the colors after every 16 row repeat oh. um, so in between in those little um, bits where the purple is or the main color you actually just carry the yarn up the side so it wasn't mm -hmm. as much work to do in terms of weaving the ends as I thought it would be the only place where I think I probably if I knit this pattern again where I would have cut the colors is when you're knitting the gusset the beginning of round obviously moves onto the bottom of the sock so you're changing the colors in just the plain stockinette part and for me I did find it a bit hard to get my tension perfect there so when it's not on the blocker it does just at this one point here where you are carrying the colors up in the plain stockinette section after the gusset it goes back onto the pattern bit so it doesn't matter but in this section here it just puckers just a oh. little bit i don't think it's noticeable like for me to wear it but it just doesn't look the best yeah. um so i would change i probably would just cut my yarn there and, and, um, and, and then uh, when i change colors and then, sew in the ends yeah. yeah like i think i'd rather have like three or four extra ends to sew in than have it puckering mm -hmm. on the bottom um, and other, the other thing that um, is maybe useful information for anybody thinking of knitting this sock. Um, so I knit the medium size, which is a 64 stitch, and I have a, a size 39, um, Europeans 39 foot. And I use just under 50 grams of the main color and about 8 grams of each of the contrast colors. So if you had just 10 gram minis, um, and mm. if you had like a 50 gram skein of the main color, for me, for my size, and I guess my tension anyway, I was able to get like a full complete pair of socks mm -hmm. out of these. So yeah, I thought that might be um, useful information yeah. yep. for some people. And it's really um, nice soft yarn as yeah. well. Um, so the next pair of socks I have, I think I also had this as a whip in my um, last, in the last podcast, mm -hmm. um, was my self-striping socks. So this is the first time I've knit uh, a pair of self-striping socks. And the yarn is from the main color is from Rainbows and Sprinkles. Uh, the colorway is called Mike Wazowski, and the contrast is from Cheshire Hand Dyed, which is an Etsy seller. So I'll just kind of hold it up a little bit closer. You can see, hopefully, you can see um, these lighter colors in the stripes is actually like a very pale peach color. So it's not um, totally white. I think maybe from a distance, it kind of just looks like an off white. Oh, yeah. um, so I just did this as like a plain vanilla sock. I uh, just knit the whole tube and then I just followed um, the Crazy Sock Ladies uh, tutorial for an afterthought heel with no waste yarn. Um, so yeah, that was it. I think the afterthought heel, the fit is a little bit loose on my heel, so I'm not too sure if maybe I did do, I think, one round of plain knitting before I went into the decreases. So I'm not too sure if maybe on my next pair, if I might try doing a... Um, uh, um, like not not including that round of plain knitting mm -hmm. um the other thing that i'm thinking to try which i have actually with the next sock that i've cast on that I, I only just started it today um i think i might try knitting with a two millimeter needle which is a us zero instead of a 2.25 i just think oh, i'm nice. a very loose knitter so um, yep. i'm not too sure if maybe changing my needle size will help me get a better fit um, on my socks uh, so that was my second pair of socks um, the self-striping ones and then speaking of getting my socks to fit me better um, this third pair of socks that I knit so this is the Sorry. first one <laughs> the other sock is coming P PS um, <laughs> I've been trying to I'm probably I don't know if you noticed that I was <laughs> changing the socks she's trying to do it like without anyone <laughs> noticing like a on the seamless transition so um, <laughs> That's there okay. There's Thank the you. other one. <laughs> um, so these are, I knit these socks using um, a Nitty Natty's Perfect Fit Socks course. And the yarn I used is, uh, the main one is from Earth Yarns, their Unique Fingering, which is actually 100% merino. It doesn't have any nylon in it, so I'll oh. see how I go. Um, yeah. But the contrast color is a uh, mini from Melbourne City Dye Works, and that one mm -hmm. is a 75-25. So I feel like at least I've got the nylon in, like, the part of the sock that gets, like, the most wear Oh, the heels wear and, and the toes, yeah. yeah. Um, and this one, weirdly, I didn't actually realize that this was a self-striping skein just the way I think it was like skeined up, it wasn't super obvious to me yep. until I started knitting with it. But because the repeat was so long, there was just two of it in the whole 
um, skein, I was kind of like, well, I could, if I match the socks, I'm only going to get half the, the colors. So I decided to just do, I call it like sisters, but not twins yep. kind of, um, socks. So yeah, that I knit these using, um, Nitty Natty's Perfect Fit Socks course, which includes, um, a fish lips hiss fish lips kiss heel that's very hard to say <laughs> um and what she calls an ergonomic toe so you decrease at a different rate on the two sides of the toe depending if it's for your left or your right foot oh so these do actually have a left and right sock yeah and you just do a pearl bump on the inside of oh. each big toes so that you can remember but i, I guess mean, for me these, i would they're just different yeah, you would because of the colors i would realize be able to remember. um so yeah i think the perfect fit socks course i can't remember exactly how much it was it's not cheap but um i felt like it was quite comprehensive and for me as a sort of a fairly beginner sock knitter it did give me a lot of information <laughs> about like how i could adjust um sock patterns to get a better fit on me personally yep. um and i actually also thought oh, that's good if you for the fish lips kiss heel um i really didn't understand the pattern when i just read the pattern but oh, um but and it's, it's yeah. not actually natalie's pattern mm -hmm. um but she sort of purchased the rights to use the pattern in her course yep. but the way she explained the pattern just made so much more sense to okay. me so oh, that's good um yeah that was my um and to be honest i would say i don't think that these are the absolute perfect fit for me i think i'm still tweaking but i think that yeah probably it's a bit of a process to get um yeah but i like guess something like from doing the course perfectly. do you feel like you have more understanding of like how to tweak or yeah definitely and at the very end of it um she actually gives you like a spreadsheet that you can type in like whoever's like your measurements or you know if you want to knit socks as a gift for someone, their yep. measurements, if you change your needle size and your gauge changes, whatever, you plug in all these numbers and then it spits out like your stitch counts for you. So it has like a oh. cuff stitch count, a leg stitch count, a heel wow. and foot and toe. Mm. Like it, it basically rewrites the pattern for you yep. depending on what numbers you plug in. So mm. I find, I think that will be very helpful in like making these little sort of tweaks and adjustments. So, um, yeah, that was the, my perfect fit socks. Um, and then just, oh, before we stop talking about socks, were you going to mention about, um, crazy socks for dogs? Day? Oh yes. Yes. Sorry. Um, yeah. If anyone, I, I don't know if this is an international thing or just in Australia, hopefully we'll get this video out before then. This is Sunday. What is it? The 28th of May when we're filming mm -hmm. this, but Friday, the 2nd of June is, um, called crazy socks for docs day. And it's just a day about like promoting, uh, mental health, uh, awareness amongst medical practitioners. So the idea is for medical practitioners, um, and I guess like other allied health stuff and like, yeah, both of us work in healthcare, yep. um, to wear like really loud, crazy socks, even like, um, odd socks. And I guess like roll up your pants or whatever <laughs> a bit so that your socks are visible. And then if people are like, Oh, what's with the crazy socks? You can it's, like, can start like a conversation, yeah, talk to them about like, yeah, that for a lot of, um, health workers, I think um, especially the past couple of years. Yeah, like mental health has been, very, has been a bit of a challenge. Very um, challenging for yeah. people working in healthcare. Mm, mm. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot about that. And now you have a, a I, very I well stocked crazy sock I'm, drawer. I'm pretty sure I will be busting out these ones. <laughs> they're probably on the them. craziest ones they're probably you've the made craziest. so far. Yeah. 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 But you'll have definitely no shortage of um, no. crazy socks for. Um, for future crazy socks. And then my other FO or series of FOs, this is just some, um, a lot more yarn cozies I've been making, um, just as part of Nitty Natty's Cozy Along, which mm -hmm. has been running in the month of May. Um, so I've just used up the leftovers, or not all of the leftovers, but some of them from my um, socks. So that was from, obviously, from the Mike Wazowski. Um, I feel like that is a good... The problem is, I think, with self-striping yarn, it's hard to find things that you can... Oh, use them for that's not for. like it that's not just a, well, I suppose this is kind of like a tube as well yeah because like if you just use them to make like I don't know granny squares or something like that mm. I think a lot of the time they don't look that or they look a bit weird yeah um so I thought yeah this is a good good opportunity yep. the other thing I was thinking is to make what's called like a jelly roll blanket which is where you knit like these really long strips and then uh -huh. um like seam them together because then like because it's still like a short like with because like if you knit a blanket that was as wide as this blanket yeah like you're not you're going to lose that effect i think so yep. i'm thinking maybe a jelly roll blanket but um anyway 
Um, and then with the leftovers from the earth yarns, I actually made like a whole set of yarn um, cozies. So I'll probably just take a photo to show. And this is basically the second uh, repeat of the color. So I made two 100 grams, two 50 grams, and two 20 grams. Because I do have a few self-striping yarns that they've already split it into two 50 gram um, hanks for me so mm -hmm. so that you can make like identical socks oh. so it will be helpful to have two 50 gram cozies for those kind yep. of projects and then like um, you oh, know this feels really nice some um, cozies for my um, contrast minis and stuff so, like that Susie's um, dog hairs on it. <laughs> that's okay um, and so did you not have enough of this to make another pair of socks or you just decided um, to make I probably would have had just enough to make a second pair oh. of socks but I don't know I just I guess I didn't want... I suppose I could have, because then I could have worn the same socks or I could have had different socks, but... Yeah, like they, if they would have... Like the stripes started in different places or whatever. But yeah. no, like these are nice. Yeah, I just thought that was a good way to use up. Yeah, um, and it's good if you found a, a good project to use up the striping ones. Yeah, and these knit up very quickly. I feel like this would be a good gift, like for a knitter. I mean, in mm. some ways, like, they could just knit it for themselves, but like, yeah. yeah. If you had like a little Kris Kringle amongst like your knitting friends knit or something. Kringle. Oh yeah, knit Kringle. Or craft Kringle. Maybe I think we should maybe we should organise something like that. Well, I kind of wanted to organise a craft Kringle um, last year oh, at work. Um, but I just kind of never got around to it. And then oh. yeah, I, I suppose also like with something like that, you obviously have to give people quite a bit of like lead, lead time like because different it will have different potentially like, take them quite a while to actually things. make yeah. make the item. Yeah, oh, I just like the the, the the sound of the name craft Kringle, like because it has that like same like alliteration yeah. as Chris Kringle, like the maybe I'll join your workplace as an honorary like. Observe. I mean, if we don't have to. We could organise it through some other people. Yeah, through like friends or something. Um, yeah. So that is all of my finished objects. Yeah. Oh, and the baby. I forgot about the the, the baby things. Um, so and how could I forget? Because um, this is actually my first uh, stranded colour work project that I've done. Mm -hmm. So I'll put a photo up. But I basically made. Um, there's a free pattern on Ravelry called the Baby Berry Beanie, and it's by Michelle Sabatier or Sabatier. I'm not 100% sure how to say it. Um, and it is yeah like a little berry beanie that has like a little stalk on mm. the head for a baby. Cute. Uh, it's very cute. I used some. Uh, pure merino wool from Morris and Sons. It's their it's their own um, line of yarn. Uh, I think it's called Empire, and it's a I use the ten ply version. Mm -hmm. um, and so I personally wanted to make a strawberry, but um, my brother said for his baby, who's like our nephew, that he wanted a blueberry instead. So I was like, mm, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I made a blueberry baby beanie, um, and then he also suggested that it would be like a cute i guess to make like a mama and me kind of set a so matching, yep. a matching set so yeah i made a second one in an adult size that one um i guess i was kind of proud of myself because it's like my first stranded color work project mm -hmm. and i had to adapt the chart because that the pattern is only for baby size mm. so i just looked up like another beanie pattern like adult beanie pattern in 10 ply or yep. like um worsted weight and kind of got the stitch count yep. from that and then adapted the the pattern for the leaves and the stalk mm -hmm. um based on my initial stitch count um and yeah i think they fit pretty well um yep. and yeah it looks very cute on yeah. the two of them but i think i might actually still make the strawberry one for myself just because yeah, i think not? it like, would be cool. <laughs> cute and i suppose now that you've gone to the effort of um like re sort of adapting the yeah. pattern for an adult size. yeah that's true that's true like why not um use it twice um so for my project yarnathon which is i'm trying to knit and crochet a marathon's worth of yarn which is 42,195 meters uh since our last video update i have used up 3,223 meters mm -hmm. and that takes me to a total of 12,672 12, meters mm -hmm. which is 30 percent of the marathon so oh, wow yeah, i'm getting there um but yeah i think that is basically it for our finished objects yes so i think yeah we can move on we'll to see you in the next section yep yeah. yep yeah. 
So now it's time for Whip It Good, which is our section where we talk about our whips or work in progress. And I think, Pia, you're going to go first today? Yes, I only have one work in progress. Um, so this... I um, feel like this is actually work with lots of progress. Uh, I mean, I finished the yellow row. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, so this, I've shown this in a couple of our previous episodes. And this is my Happy Valley Baby Afghan, which is, it's a mitre square blanket. Um, so each square is knit uh, one by one and you join the squares um, together as you go. So instead of, instead of casting on um, like you normally would, you actually pick up the stitches along the edge of the previous square. Um, so, uh, but you do end up with a lot of ends to weave in along the back. So I really want to learn. I should get, just get you to teach me because I was watching a few YouTube videos and it seems like there's a few different ways of doing this like decrease in the middle and it was confusing to me so i think i should just ask you for help oh okay yeah i mean i have also seen um actually when we were at the yesterday we went to um a knitting and crochet meetup um just at a pub in south melbourne um and one of the ladies i was talking to she was showing me pictures of a mitre square blanket that she made um but she sewed the uh, so she knitted the squares separately and then oh, sewed them together. Yeah. So I guess it just gives a bit of a different look because I think the the method of joining your squares to get like knitting the squares together as you go, all of the mitres will be pointing in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Whereas the blanket that this lady had made, um, she had a sort of it was kind of like in a cross. So oh, I think I have seen that, or where people do like maybe panels, but then they arrange yeah. them in certain. So it's almost like. It almost has almost like a quilt. Like, you know how quilts have these, like, blocks with sort of, like, yeah. geometric... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks kind of like that sort of, yeah, ge more sort of like a geometric pattern rather than all the mitres going in the same, um, in the same uh, direction. But yeah, I do... I um, quite like this. Like, I feel like it's quite... Um, it's quite satisfying to knit because each individual square only takes about half an hour to knit. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're, you know, if you're making a blanket this size, you know, one row, if you're just knitting kind of like a... If you were just knitting it flat, um, just in sort of rows, each row would probably take you, um, well, will take me almost half an hour. Um, that, that it, I, I guess if you only knit one or two rows, what if you feel like, oh, I haven't really made any progress? But like mm -hmm. at least with this, um, like I had like a little um, sheet of like graph paper where I was like ticking off mm. the squares as we went. Um, so yeah, um, so once I finish, I've got, um, I'm onto the last. Uh, color row which is this pink and i think on now in our last update you were in this green row weren't you yes so you've yeah, the, finished yellow the yellow row. one and now i'm started on the pink so this will be the last color and then the other job that i have to do is uh to knit kind of like a triangle um down the sides to give like kind of a straight side uh i'm a bit undecided um the other edges if i will leave that as kind of like can show you this on this edge if i'll leave that as like a zigzag that's what it um is in the pattern um the pattern is just from um i should have said before from lion brand yarn and this is this yarn is the lion brand ice cream yarn so it's just a free pattern um on their website um but yeah i'm a bit undecided whether i will leave that as a zigzag or also fill in the triangles to make it kind of straight on both sides because i um i think i've pretty much decided to <laughs> avoid having to deal with all of this um craziness of all the sewing in all these ends um that i will just uh sew like a fleece backing onto it which i think will actually be nice because it'll obviously make it a bit warmer a bit um, and a bit, a bit probably, more yeah. a bit more cozy and a bit more sturdy as well yeah. yeah 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 and give it kind of a bit of a soft kind of squishy kind of feel to be um sort of like a floor because i think that's what this like style of afghan blanket is meant to be used as sort of like a floor For rug babies, yeah. um so yeah so hopefully not too much longer to go on this um but yeah i've got yeah 10 no nine more squares full squares and then the triangle bits Hmm. to do um but i haven't actually like i have to go back and look at the pattern to see because obviously the construction of knitting the triangle is completely different to knitting the square so i have oh, to okay. um learn how to how to do that hmm. 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 cool um okay so i have three whips to show two mm -hmm. of them are new but one i was working on in our last um video so i will show that one first um oops the yarn has run away from me 
Um, so this first one is the Highland Slipover by Ozetta Knitwear. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm kind of getting to it being almost finished on this actually. You'll see if I can hold it up. Um, so the yarn I'm using is from Le Bien Aimé in their uh, Merino Aran um, base and the colorway is called Calliope. Mm -hmm. And this is um, what I have done so far. Um, so I'm thinking it's actually almost long enough for me. I think I'll probably knit on the body for just a couple more centimeters mm -hmm. and then um, do the ribbing. Um, my gauge, I think I mentioned in the last episode, my gauge, especially my row gauge, was a little bit looser than the designers. And then as I was knitting it, I guess it's a thing like sometimes your gauge swatch, like if it's a big garment, like just the weight of it can kind of stretch it down stretch it down a bit so i think my gauge is actually even looser which oh. means it's going to be quite a bit bigger than what i had hoped um mm -hmm. and hopefully it doesn't grow too much when i block it yeah um but it's supposed to be like the garment is supposed to have quite a lot of negative ease yep. any, anyway so i think it will be okay i mean if it really bothers me i think i would just pull it out and knit the small size like ideally i wouldn't have to do that but I would rather spend the time and then end up with something that I like and I'm happy yep. to wear than something yep. that I don't like because I I do really really love yeah um, the this, colors, this are colors. Really, I'll hold really it up a little beautiful. bit closer um, so you can see it's sort of like this uh, gray and lilac -y color with a few sort of like brighter purple and magenta um, speckles and I have been um, doing helical knitting um, throughout uh, the only section I didn't alternate skeins was when I was doing the short row shaping on the back. I just couldn't figure out how to do that. Yep. I don't even know if you can. Um, and then so once I got to just knitting the front and the back, I was just alternating skeins every two rows mm -hmm. and carrying the other skein up the side. And then once I joined in the round, I've just been doing helical knitting. Mm -hmm. um, so I think at our last episode, I had basically knit from here to about here like it was just a small oh, so piece so yeah. heaps of progress then yeah i actually i knit i was knitting on it quite a bit i was in hospital on monday just for like a minor procedure but i had to wait for probably i don't know like four hours ish mm -hmm. so um i was just yeah <laughs> <laughs> knitting on this the whole time Getting busy um and yeah once i joined in the round obviously got really fast because don't have to do any pearls um so yeah i think i'll just do a few more centimeters and then uh then you um do obviously the ribbing on the bottom bind off and then it's a drop shoulder construction but it's like a short sleeve so um from the armholes you just pick up stitches and do the ribbing straight away mm -hmm. and then the neckline is uh, a folded neckline so pick up stitches and then knit a, a neckline and then fold it over and just like tack it on the inside yep. i was a little bit worried that i was gonna not have enough yarn because i think just based on the recommended yardage for the size that I'm knitting, which is the size large. Um, I was maybe about a hundred meters short, oh. but I think I'm definitely not going to have that problem because of the skeins I'm using at the moment. Uh, one of them I'm almost finished, uh, yep. but the other one, I don't even know where it is. Um, I've still got, I don't know, probably like half of it left. And then oh, I still wow. have two full skeins oh. that I haven't wound up yet. So I'm 100% going to have, probably more than enough yeah um heaps. yeah i might even have one full skein that i don't end up using um but yeah in terms of the sizing i think i think i'm sort of like far into it enough that i will just commit to finish it and see mm -hmm. what happens when it's blocked yeah um and if i really am not happy just redo it um yeah. but i think if i knit it again like in a different color or something like that mm -hmm. i probably would try the size, so me the size, the size medium because mm -hmm. i was happy with the fabric that this needle size was producing so i didn't really want to like um use a smaller needle because that yep. would obviously produce a different fabric yep so yeah that is the highland slipover by ozetta knitwear mm -hmm. um and then the other two whips i have i haven't done too much on them so this is just a pair of socks <laughs> barely uh that i cast on no, I think not this morning, last night, I think. Um, so this is the Beekeeper Sock by Jen Emerson. Mm -hmm. um, and it is actually a toe-up sock, which is something new for me. I've only mm. ever knit cuff down. Yep. Um, and it has um, all over the foot and um, up the leg, it has like a... It's actually cabling, but in my opinion, it ends up 
not looking like cabling but actually more like honeycomb hence the name beekeeper sock oh, okay. um, because you basically do like um right and left leaning cables and then you do left and right leaning cables to make this sort of like honeycomb yep. pattern mm-hmm. i've really mm-hmm. only just started it so i don't know if you'll be able to see um any of the cabling but probably not um but um, in our next episode, I will be sure to update you. And um, we'll this is have finished them. <laughs> uh, I don't think At the so. rate you need to. I don't think so. Um, because yeah, I've yeah I've only done one repeat of it, so it's an eight row repeat, and only two yep. of the out of those eight rows you have to cable. Okay. So I've only done yeah, had two rows of practicing cabling, and it's quite for me anyway. I guess mm. I'm quite slow at it. I'm trying so far to do the technique of cabling without a cable needle, Um, but I am finding like with this fine gauge, it's a bit tricky. So I might have to actually just use like a DPN as a cable needle. Uh, For some reason, I don't know if other people have found this as well. I find the left leaning cable is not too bad to do without the cable needle, but the right leaning cable, I find it really tricky to pick up the stitches um, and rearrange them. So yeah. yeah. Um, and this one, the yarn, I bought it at Morris and Sons. Uh, the color, it's from, but it's from Manos del Uruguay, which is like Hands of Uruguay. Oh. Um, and it's their Alegria, Alegria, Happiness uh, base, which is a four ply so fingering. I think it might actually be a three ply. I can only see three plies in there, but it's a fingering weight, which in Australia, I think people often say four ply, regardless of whether it oh, actually has. Ply it has um, yeah ply but yeah so it's their fingering weight it's a 75 25 uh, superwash merino nylon and um, this colorway is called paradise mm. um, so yeah I think That's it's nice. I really do like the colors um, mm. yeah so I'm, I'm sure at our next episode that will be a whip because I think I'm actually gonna cast on I don't know maybe tomorrow or something like that some kind of vanilla sock as well just to have some like plain stockinette oh, yep. project to work on because I don't think I would do this on the train like I think it would just be too stressful and like yep. the train like jolted or something and you like mm-hmm. drop your stitches or like yes. yeah i think it would just not work out well if i tried to knit that on the train mm-hmm. um and then the last thing is a crochet whip mm-hmm. so just to pick up the yarn that i'm working with otherwise i'll pull the whole thing out um so this is a uh, corner to corner blanket that i started on uh friday um wrong way um so <laughs> <laughs> i'm just using uh some scrappy packs in eight ply that i bought from little woolly uh so and i'm trying not to be too like micromanage the different colors too much like yeah. i'm sort of when i finish one color like doing a bit of a lucky dip but sometimes i have been like mm, no because no. <laughs> like sometimes there are a few that are purple so i don't really want all the purples to be like oh, together. right next yep. to each other so i'm sort of trying to go with the flow but sometimes making little adjustments yeah um so this is the first corner to corner project i've ever done i could not make sense of like written instructions for corner to corner crochet but i just watched a, oh, a youtube a, yeah from bella coco um and i guess this one maybe it's a bit similar to a mitre square in mm. some ways because like when you start it because it starts in this corner um and it works out this way mm. like at the beginning each row only has like very few clusters so you build up that quite quickly and then it will slow down and then speed up again as you start decreasing so um mm. i mean that that's not with a mitre square like you your cast on would be from here to here kind of thing. oh okay so, so it's the opposite oh sorry yeah i don't know how to do mitre <laughs> that's okay sorry <laughs> in my head i was just thinking i wonder if you could knit a blanket that was just one gigantic mitre square but i feel like that would be very hard. You probably could, but you would have to cast on like 500 yeah, stitches. Yeah, it would be insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a silly idea. <laughs> um, the Guinness Book of Records. For the world's largest mitre square. Um, <laughs> probably no one has ever attempted that. So Yeah, so maybe you could just make it like 20 centimetres. <laughs> and it would still technically be the largest. Um, so yeah, I think I bought three scrappy packs of that. So I think I'll just see, so that's obviously each one has six different colors. So I've got 18 colors. So I think I'll see how far I get with nine. And then if I feel that it will be like a decent size, then just start decreasing. Mm -hmm. If not, um, yeah, I guess maybe wait till I finish some like other DK weight projects that then I could have some, a few more like different colors in probably, but yeah. 
it's very satisfying and it i feel like the corner to corner like it has a nice like it the fabric feels like a nice and squishy do you always kind of... use the same style of stitch or can people can um, you do different kinds of to be stitches? honest i don't know okay. um yeah this is all with double crochet or treble crochet if you um are working with uk terms mm -hmm. um i'm honestly not sure but the i think i watched two videos one from bella coco and one from the crochet crowd and both of theirs used um clusters with double crochet or treble if you're in uk terms okay so yes that is all of my whips for today okay so now we've come to our, our final section of our podcast which is called dream weaving mm -hmm. and this is the segment where we talk about uh any new purchases of yarn or anything else like that that we've made recently and um, any sort of upcoming plans for future projects um, so if you are on a yarn no buy or low buy and you don't want to um, see other people showing off things that they've bought um, or anything like that um, feel free to um, skip the last bit of our podcast and we will see you in our next episode mm. um, but if you would like to um, see our most recent purchases then keep on watching um, do you want to go first or shall I? Uh, yeah, I can go first. Um, so I have a few things to show off. Um, and the first one is actually a gift. Um, and it's embroidery related. Again. Yes, yes. Um, so our dad does uh, woodworking and he's part of a few um, woodworking clubs. Um, and he saw, at, I think, one of their recent exhibitions yeah. or they had like a little, um, I think they had a sale uh, or uh, not like a sale, like crazy sale or whatever, but like they had a stall, uh, a stall yeah. um, with um, people selling gifts um, just before Mother's Day. Um, and he saw one of uh, the other um, people in this woodworking club was making um, wooden boxes for storing um, embroidery kind of paraphernalia and all the threads and that kind of thing. Um, so he bought one one for me and so it's got this cute little um fox oh sorry i'll try and which way oh th this way um <laughs> <laughs> is it heavy uh sort of it's i mean it is awkward, quite big yeah and so it's got the little fox with a thread on there and then inside it's got um different compartments and it's sort of lined with felt um and might we might just put a photo of it opened out but it's like one of those sort of cantilever style yes oh, it's that so it's got chests, yeah. it's got kind of three i don't know if maybe i could if i kind of put it on my lap if i could um open it out a bit more easily and then kind of lift it up to show maybe i'll help you yeah. <laughs> so um, i guess all those thinner slots is for all the floss isn't it yeah yeah now let's not catch our fingers in it yes um so yeah that was a very um thoughtful it's thought. cute and i like how the fox on the top actually looks like it's embroidering like into the wood like yeah it's, it's yeah so that's very um very thoughtful gift um from and it's dad. nice to have that kind of like because obviously you could go to spotlight and buy like a plastic chest of drawers yeah i think i've seen like a lot of people seem to use those like um fishing. fishing tackle like organizers for organizing all of their um, different threads but it's really nice to have something handmade I think. Yeah, yeah definitely mm -hmm. um and then the other two things i have to show you is both yarn um so uh when was it a couple of weeks ago we went to the um what is it the victorian hand knit and crochet guild yeah yeah um had a market on at the coburg town hall and i think do they do that once a year i think it's a yearly yeah at the um, at the coburg town hall so um we went and visited that because it's just sort of around the corner from me which is quite handy um so i purchased at that um, market from this is from dyed by hand yarns and i just got three skeins in oops i'll see if that will focus do i have to duck behind no i think that's focused um so this is her silk stocking which is a 50 50 blend of superwash merino and silk um so it oh, feels yeah feels oh, really wow. nice yeah. um in a fingering in a fingering weight and this is in the colorway realma um which is Very really nice. really pretty like, like blues a, pinks yeah. greens i really love these sort of like jewel mm. jewel toned um kind of colorways i feel like if lavender cottage had a uniform it would be like these colors <laughs> <laughs> 
Or your um your Highlands <laughs> slip over thing is also very on brand for Lavender Cottage, I feel like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was, I f- feel like I was quite restrained um, at mm, the market. Well um, I just made one purchase. Um, I haven't really thought about exactly what I would like to do with that, but I was thinking some sort of like summery top. Um, so mm. that's why, because that um, that dyer, she did also have like the same colorway in a few different bases. So she did have like a um, sock kind of yarn that was, I think, like a merino Either, nylon, probably. Yeah, I think it was a sort of a merino nylon blend. But I thought the the um the base with the silk in it like has a very nice sort of I don't know if you can see it too well on camera, it but it has like quite a nice sheen to it. Um, so I think that would be quite nice for making some sort of. Yeah, um, it could be nice top. like an if you picked a pattern that's maybe like more of like an evening top. Yeah, yeah could be quite nice. Yeah. Um, and then the other um purchase that I made recently which actually Anna kind of facilitated for me um because I was sort of uh this is from um Woolen Works um from Chloe's what was the name of the collection Happy Accident yeah. collection um and I kind of was like oh I don't know like if I you know um if I would have anything to make with this or should I get it should I not or whatever and I kind of like hummed and hard about it for ages and then I missed out on the end of the collection um, but then um, I very kindly emailed Chloe and asked if we could sneak in a few extra skeins onto her order um, so I've got three skeins of the um, Disney Nights colorway and this is the fingering sock um, which is a 80-20 superwash merino and nylon blend um, and yeah so that's really pretty as well um, I feel like it's like similar sort of colors as in like purples and pinks um, and blues but it's yellow, more yeah. more of a um, pastel kind and of and I feel like the, it's a bit of a warmer purple as well. yeah like and there is some yeah. there is some you can see in that one there's a bit of like sort of peachy like orangey yellow so yeah that's really pretty and so what are you, are you going to knit like a t-shirt or something like that i was thinking too yes, yes. yeah mm. nice yeah cool yep. um so for my dream weaving i do have two plans and then mm-hmm. um some purchases mm-hmm. um so my first thing was uh mother's day related so i kind of wasn't organized enough to knit something for mum for mother's day and mm-hmm. for mother's day um, neither was I <laughs> <laughs> so what I actually did was I gave her like a, a voucher um, mm, for a pair of socks idea. but it also included like to shop my stash so it was like mm-hmm. I sort of laid out um, like the single skeins of sock yarn that I have yep um, and yeah basically it was like any of these pick a skein and I will make you a pair of socks from that so I don't know I feel like in some ways I feel like maybe it's a bit of a cop out (laughs) because I was like not prepared in time but also on the other hand I I think got to pick the colors that she wanted like a fun experience like to go shopping like yeah yeah. and then and then have someone make something like sort of custom made for you yeah so um this is the skein that mum chose it's from Hugh Loco but it's from actually a mystery sock set that I bought I think when they had their Christmas um, or Boxing Day sale so I don't think this colorway as far as I know doesn't actually have a name Mm. Um, but it's sort of like this uh, blue and some like burgundy um, sort of mix Mm. and I would say some purple as well so yeah that's the colorway that she chose funnily enough after I sort of set it aside my brother saw this and he mm-hmm. was like, what's this for? And I said, oh, it's for a pair of socks for mum. And he was like, really? I like it. And I was like, well, <laughs> that's too bad. You missed out. <laughs> it's Mother's Day, not Brother's Day. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to make till his a... his birthday or something. Or <laughs> well, his Father's Day. Um, a pair of socks um, out of this for, for mum. And I'll have to, yeah, I might show her a few different, um, like, examples and see if she wants, like, a pattern sock or just like a plain vanilla sock or like ribbed um, mm. yeah to the specifications that she desires mm-hmm. um, and my other like plan is that um, it's exciting for me I guess I've actually been accepted for my very first test knit mm-hmm. um, yeah which is fun so I applied to test for um, Jamie from Jamie creates for the patterns that she's writing for her new book so I think Mm-hmm. is coming out next year i think mm-hmm. um and the pattern i applied for was uh, i actually applied for two i applied for a vest and a jumper and i got accepted for the vest mm-hmm. so it is called the stairway to heaven vest um and 
this is the yarn that I'm going to be using. Um, so it's from Le Bien Aimé and it is their uh, big merino base. So it's a uh, chunky weight uh, single ply superwash merino. It's kind of twisted around so you can see all, all the different mm. colors. Um, and this is from their Miyazaki collection, um, specifically from uh, Howl's Moving Castle. And the colorway that this is uh, called is Howl and Sophie. Mm. So yeah, very excited nice. to um, cake this up and knit my swatch and yep. then get started. Um, so what what is involved in the process of becoming a test knitter or like applying to be a test knitter? Like do you have to give like a CV? Of... Um, I guess, well obviously I only have this uh, very limited experience, but I believe like most designers usually put out calls for testers on Instagram mm -hmm. um, and some of them as well if they have like a monthly newsletter they would um, put out tester calls oh like in, if they on their email yeah list. in, in yeah. their email list mm -hmm. uh, and yeah for this one I think to apply for the test um, you obviously have to uh, I think usually the main requirement is that you have some kind of uh, like that you have a public Instagram page because okay. where they can see um, your work but also because like part of the deal I guess is that um, once the test is finished and the pattern is released that you are involved in I guess like promoting like sharing oh. um, photos of your uh, finished object and stuff mm -hmm. um, so yeah that is a part of it um, but then yeah I think like Jamie just asked for like your experience level yeah. um, with knitting um, obviously what size so she gives like the size guide for yep. the patterns and then asks you what size you'll be knitting because obviously she doesn't want you know 50 people testing the size medium and yep, nobody testing want, like other a range sizes. Of sizes yep so yep. um a range of sizes um and i mean with this one she there was a feel that was just like why would you like to be part of the the test mm -hmm. um but yeah, so that was basically all that was involved. Yep. Um, and so do you... Oh, and actually, to... sorry, uh, I think she asked as well if you, like, if you did already know, like, what yarn you would be planning to use oh, for the project. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. yep. That's fair. But so you don't have to be sort of like an expert level. No, no. And I, I think for this, for, for the ones that... Um, because I think like she's writing a book so I think she I think there were about maybe nine different patterns that she was asking for testers for mm -hmm. and I think for most of them she said like beginner to intermediate but I think maybe yeah. some of them did say recommended for like intermediate knitter mm -hmm. okay. um, fair enough I mean yeah. I suppose it would be beneficial for them to have people of various skill levels as a tester yeah for sure to to make sure that the um pattern is sort of like accessible to different yeah skill yeah levels. yeah and and like in the application form like it tells you when like the deadline would be so i guess it's up to you to sort of think about do you if you actually yeah, have time to will, do it will as i well. have time and and if i don't currently i mean this i already had i didn't buy it specifically for the test yeah um but yeah if you had to buy yarn for it like i guess particularly in australia mm. you know if you're buying from overseas can sometimes take a couple of weeks for things to get here and that type yep. of stuff yeah like is that feasible um yep. i actually i can put it in our description box below i watched um the other day uh the channel therapy by craft she had um a video that was just basically about her experiences oh, of like test knitting and i guess knitter. like tips for um like t like new um test knitters um mm -hmm. and even some tips on like how to get selected for test knits yep um so yeah if you wanted to find out more about that you or anyone who's watching this video yeah i found that video actually very informative okay. um yeah and i thought it was a good good thing to watch um so yeah that is my second uh dream weaving uh, thing and then my last dream weaving is a little bit of a haul as well from the Coburg um, or Mary Beck I should say town hall uh, market from the well it is Coburg town hall oh is it okay. because there is a town hall in Brunswick as well. oh okay sorry um yes. you're not local to the area so, so you're forgiven for not knowing um all right so I have um 
I did try to be a bit more restrained, but I wasn't very good. I did say to Pia, <laughs> I said to Pia before we went in, I said, oh, I'm only going to buy three skeins of yarn. And then once I had bought three skeins from the first place, I was like, oh, by the way, I meant three skeins per dyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but seriously, I, I should, um, <laughs> I, I, I need to change my ways, I think, uh, definitely. But yeah, that's something for the future. Um, so I got three um, um, gobstopper, I guess, the self-striping um, balls from Heather Maid. Um, I think she's mainly on Etsy, um, but she was also at this market, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, this is her luxury sock base, and it's an 80-20 uh, wool nylon blend. Uh, so this is the first colorway that I got. I'll try and show like all the different colors that are in it like quite tropical um, looking yeah and it's called macaw so oh. there you go she definitely was going for tropical vibes with that one um this one is called magnolia mm, it's nice mm. this last one is called rainbow lollipop oh, it's really very like descriptive yeah. she had quite a few different rainbows like one that was a bit more pastel this one i feel like is maybe a bit sort of jewel tone kind of but um, i think she had one that was more like maybe primary bright, color yeah. yeah 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 so she had a couple of different variations if you wanted to knit like some rainbow socks um yeah i think they'll all obviously be four socks and then i got three skeins from maximu um this is again just the ultra soft sock base of his which is um 80 percent superwash merino 10 percent nylon 10 percent cashmere oh. Um, so this is the first color that I got. It's called Chloe. Mm. So it's kind of like green, but also with a bit of purple, a bit of blue um, in there as well, yep. which I quite like. Uh, this one is called Planet Hunter, uh, which is, uh, again, sort of bluey green, but then also some more like reddy. Yeah, it's kind almost of like, like magenta, I would say. Galaxy I color. Thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then the last one, uh, which is sort of more like a violet type of purple mm. with some orange as well, is called Street Lights. Um, so that is um, that uh, last one. Mm -hmm. So I think that's basically it for this um, episode, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So thanks yeah. for joining us. Um, please check out the description box below because we'll mm. put links to um, all um, names of any patterns and yeah and, and like I guess if we mentioned. I can't remember but like if we did happen to forget to say like the name of the designer or or the yarn that we're using um, obviously feel free to ask but also um, it will always be in the, in description, the description box as well um, and yeah definitely feel free to leave any comments if you'd um, like to let us know anything about mm. Um, anything that we've talked about in our podcast today or if you have any questions feel free to leave us a comment mm, mm, mm. Um, you can also catch us on instagram as well so we'll put our links um, to instagram and ravelry in in our description below if, as well if you want to keep um keep up to date with what we're working on in between in between our episodes we're trying to do about once a month yeah for our episodes so um, yeah yeah if you if you enjoyed today's episode uh definitely join us uh next time in about a month yeah yeah and i guess yeah if you subscribe then you'll just get um our next episode will just come up in your youtube feed so yeah we would love for anyone who enjoyed the podcast to join us for the next one as well um but yeah i think that's basically it so yeah until the next time we see you uh we'll wish you happy stitching bye, bye.